What's up? How are you? Good, how are you? What are, what are the, um, when you get a rest day like this, do for your body? How, how do you see the benefits of it? Um, just really long season. Um, and practice is really important, but uh, being fresh on Sunday is really important too. How has your routine, sorry, your maintenance routine changed this year with, with the injury? Do you, you have to do more, uh, I don't know, stretching care of it uh, during the week? No, it's really not too much different. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've kept pretty much my entire routine. Um, massage, lifting, stretching. Same stuff. Uh, the last guy to, to come in here. I mean, yeah. what is what is the post practice routine for for Nick Bosa? Um, on Thursday, I usually do a squat after practice. Um, lighter than the squat I do on um, Monday or Tuesday, but. Uh, yeah, I just I, I get my lifts in throughout the week, so that's that that's what keeps me later. Um, and then I do uh, I did the sauna and then the cold tub, so I do twenty minutes sauna and then three minutes in the really cold tub up to my neck, just because I heard it on a Rogan podcast. Is that torture? Nah, I'm I'm pretty used to it now. Oh yeah, it, it makes your body throb, but then you get used to it. So I don't know if it's helping. But. Does anybody else do that too? Um, I know a lot of guys do the sauna. Fred does the cold tub after too. Yeah, so Fred does it. I don't think he goes up to his neck though, so it doesn't count. Does it not count? You said. No, it doesn't. Uh, with Contavious Street, you know, with Kim on, it looks like out for, uh, I mean, he could assume a, a larger role, you know, need him to. What have you seen from him? And do you see him as a guy who could develop into, you know, a starting type defense line? Yeah, for sure. I think everybody in this building has known that he could do that for a while. Um, just physically how gifted he is and and he's a great guy and uh, he's always worked really hard he just hasn't really got the hang of it until recently and um, and I think he's playing really well so he just has to keep it up when you say um, kind of get, get the hang of it what, I think a lot of people will be like oh yeah even it's tackle you just go straight ahead how hard can this be but I mean what are some elements of his game that he's developed um, I think it's just mainly consistency and doing what he does every day in practice in the games because um, it's always been there. It's just consistent and and uh, showing up on Sunday instead of practice and camp. He was given a full sack on Thursday night. Yeah. Uh, what do you Pitch to uh, the <laughs> Look like you kind of began. No, nah, that's when you hit the ball. Maybe <laughs> uh, no, when you get the ball out. But um, I thought it was a pick. But obviously, we like to have sacks in, on our stat sheet. So um, good for street. <laughs> Like you deserved half a sack. No, it's no. all good. This is a losing streak. As a, as a guy who's looked at to provide a lot of production every week, how much onus do you put on yourself? I know you don't want to like go outside of your assignment or, or whatever, but just to maybe make that big play to, to change the game. Definitely do. Um, it's a team game, though, more than any sport, and it doesn't really matter if, if one guy is – playing really well because you need everybody to to play well and um, obviously I, I'd like to make more plays and, and help the team more uh, but it's never going to be one guy on offense or defense. At that point Nick, do you guys feel the, in terms of the pass rush um, that you could really help 
the secondary when they're struggling with PI calls going against them like this? Yeah, I do. Um, there's, I mean, yeah, there's a lot um, that we need to get better at overall as a defense and as a team. So we're just going to keep working on everything. You were talking about how you wanted to not feel sorry for yourself, not to stand there after people were chipping you. Do you feel like that was a mental turning point for you and you've gone forward from that? I do, yeah, with with that certain aspect. Um, I just I realize that it's going to be every week with that stuff, so I have to figure out ways. And schematically, we've done a better job with it, too. Jason Peters has been in the league for forever. Watching him on film, has he changed at all, or is he as good as he has been in the past? Um, I don't think he would even say he's as good as he was when he was um, a young player, but obviously uh, when you play 18 years in the league, you lose some, but uh, he's still a very good left tackle, and um, I think he's starting to get his groove, and he's looking good. You guys have a lot of, um, I think, res uh, respected leaders, a lot of whom are more lead by example types. Like at this point, like you're on a four-game losing streak, do you need? And maybe there are there are people, you know. Do you need someone who is more of a, a jerk, like, to get into, you know? Yeah. Well, I don't know. You don't need to throw things, but, you know, just to kind of rattle, rattle things. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we're missing Kittle out there with his uh, voc vocal leadership. And um, Raheem, I think, was a really good vocal leader. Um, Trent. Another vocal guy. Um, so, yeah, it, it does help to have some guys that are more vocal and will get get on other guys about certain things. And um, but we got to work with what we got, and we we definitely have enough leaders out there that we should be able to um, do our job on offense and defense. Last one. You weren't there at Ohio State with Justin Fields, but. Are you familiar with what he did there and how maybe he's progressed or how different he looks now? Yeah, I think he's he's gotten a lot better since early in the year. He kind of got thrown into it, and, uh, and he's starting to look like the guy that everybody thought was coming out. So looks good. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe.